Autocratic leaders can sometimes get a bad rap. They're seen as dictators who rule with an iron fist. But that do-as-I-say approach isn't always a bad thing. So let's explore what autocratic leadership is, when it works, and how you can make the style work for you. To start, autocratic or authoritarian leadership is a framework where one person makes all decisions independently. These leaders maintain complete control and take little to no input from others. There are a few key features of autocratic leadership. First, leaders control all decisions. Employees are rarely trusted to make choices. And while leaders may ask their team for input, it's not required. Second, work is highly regulated, disciplined, and structured, and subordinates are closely guided and monitored. Third, leaders decide all methods and processes. They determine what needs to get done, how that work should happen, and who's responsible for what. And fourth, because leaders are hyper-involved, they take full accountability for the failures and successes of a project. In certain situations, autocratic leadership can be highly useful. Having one person in charge isn't always a bad thing, and it can lead to some notable benefits. The first benefit of autocratic leadership is that expectations are clear. Employees understand what's required of them, and there's no question about what needs to get done. Second, Autocratic leaders bring order and structure into the workplace. Providing strict direction and guidance, these leaders get people in line and projects on track. And third, with one person in charge and no group consensus needed, decisions are made quickly. Of course, under the wrong circumstances, autocratic leadership can come with a few drawbacks. The first drawback of autocratic leadership is that it can lower morale. Having no say in how things are done, employees may feel like their voices don't matter, and that can lead to feelings of detachment. Second, it creates a dependency culture where success rides entirely on a leader's shoulders. If a leader's incompetent, the entire organization will suffer. And third, it impairs creativity drastically. When decisions aren't challenged or cultivated through collaboration, you leave no space for conflicting ideas or perspectives. So, how can you get the most from an autocratic style and avoid those negative side effects? You should only use this approach if the following are true. First, since success depends on a single person, you must have a competent leader in charge. Only use an autocratic style if the leader is the most knowledgeable person in the group. Second, your team requires clear direction. If your employees are struggling to get organized and stay on target, an autocratic leader can assign roles, tasks, processes, and deadlines. And that type of overhead can build a team's competency from the ground up. Third, you're facing a crisis. Rather than needing to deliberate, consult, and agree, one person will call all the shots, which means you can act quickly and restore order as soon as possible. And finally, you need consistency and precision. Industries that require near-perfect accuracy, like manufacturing and construction and the restaurant industry, do well under strict supervision. In such scenarios, everyone must perform their job to the book, no modifications. If you've decided that the autocratic approach is the best framework for your needs, you'll need to leverage the style fully. While you don't need to justify your decisions or consult with others, it's still important to acknowledge and respect your team, communicate rules before you enforce them, and not ignore your employees outright. Instead, listen to your staff, hold the occasional meeting, and roll out surveys. Follow these tips, and consider your team, environment, and leader in charge, and you can create a successful and prosperous workplace under the autocratic style.